Welcome to Your Healthy Kitchen from YRMC. Welcome to Your Healthy Kitchen. I'm your host, Rita Carey Rubin. I'm happy to welcome a special guest today who's doing important work to improve the quality of life, uh, quality of, life of children and adults living in our corner of Yavapai County. And Shay Richland is the coordinator of the Quad Cities Food Recovery Project, a program designed to facilitate the delivery of healthy food that might otherwise wind up in a landfill to hungry people in our community. Welcome, Shay. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. It's so good to have you here. Um, well, tell us, what is the, the Quad Cities Food Recovery Project exactly? And also, what, what's your role? Well, my mission is to identify sources of edible food that might normally go in the landfill mm -hmm. and channel that food to organizations that can use it, that are food insecure or hungry. And my job besides doing that is also to recruit some volunteers and to find out more sources of food in the community. Yeah. And prevent so them from going to waste. From go yeah, from winding up in a landfill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so wh why, is that, why is that so important? Well, uh, two reasons. Mm -hmm. One is, depending on the source, 40% of the food produced in this country ends up in the landfill. Well, that's amazing. Wow. And secondly, in Arizona, we've discovered that one in three children are food insecure or hungry, one in five adults and one in six seniors. So we have a lot of folks that may not have, uh, know where their next meal is coming from or their budget just isn't stretching far enough for them to be able to feed themselves or their families each month. Right, so there's all this food that could potentially go to feed folks who need it. Exactly. And uh, food insecurity meaning that during a, during a given month, they just might not have enough food right. to make it through. And we're even talking about, you might have two parents working in a family and they just aren't earning enough to, to feed their whole family, so. Sure, sure, and it happens, like you said, one in three? One in three kids. In, mm -hmm. Wow, in, in Arizona? In, in or Yavapai County. Yavapai County. Wow. Yavapai County. That's just mm -hmm. incredible. Well, well, tell me, so, so who are some of the donors that you've lined up and, um, and also some of the food that you've, that you've recovered? Okay. Well, yeah. as you know, Yavapai Regional Medical Center is uh, one of our new donors. Right. And we're getting some prepared foods from the hospital mm -hmm. that they freeze for us and then we get that to an organization that's helping to feed their clients. We've also gotten food from um, produce from like Whipstone Farm. Mm -hmm. We've gotten extra from, uh, sometimes some of the food banks get extra f produce from St. Mary's and we have subcontracted with them so that we can help get that uh, extra food out in a timely fashion. Let's see, one of our other clients is Prescott Pines Christian uh, Camp up in the woods and they are also giving us prepared foods that they've frozen. Some of the recipients are, we are getting food to a number of the um, low-income apartment complexes mm -hmm. in town. Uh, U.S. Vets is another one, uh, right. women's shelters. And sometimes the food's even appropriate to call the food banks and say, you know, can you use some extra of this? Mm -hmm. So we have quite a variety. So, so in one way you're helping food banks move produce that might show up all at once mm -hmm. and um, and get that to folks who can use it right and and then like you said like from YRMC things that they maybe prepared extra of and didn't right didn't wind up being served in the cafeteria but it's been stayed stayed cold right um, yes. it's all food safe and right, right. and that's right. one of the things that we uh, ask our volunteers to go through the health department's food safety training because yeah. we want that to be foremost in their minds yeah so people should know it this is this is food that's that's good to eat it's not it's not anything that's that's spoiled or right and yeah. it's not anything that's mm -hmm. been um, scraped off somebody's plate right. at a restaurant right? that's good okay. that's yes. good yes. <laughs> so. um, well tell them tell me more so so what are some of the produce items that you've recovered we have some some here right that are really, these, really typical these are all good examples mm -hmm. we seem to get a lot of cucumbers and yeah. a lot of squash mm -hmm. um, certain times of the year right <laughs> Well, even because, you know, food has become national and international. Oh, you know, that's that, right. That uh, it's not just, you know, seasonal, mm -hmm. seasonal anymore. And we've gotten uh, apples, let's leather out here in pears. We had a wonderful bumper crop last summer. So we went around and we're gleaning uh, apples and pears. And I discovered a very, very easy way to use the apples. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tell, tell us about that. What do you, what? I make blender applesauce. Perfect. And what that does is I just wash the apples, chop them up, put them in a blender with a little water with cinnamon, 
You can sweeten it a little bit more if you want to, blend it up, and it's very easy to put in a one quart freezer bag. Mm -hmm. You can flatten it out and get the air out, and then it stores really nicely in the freezer. Yeah, so that's easy. You don't even have to cook it. Right. Just blend it up. And you can use some of the mm -hmm. veggies to make smoothies. Mm -hmm. Sure. And if for people that really want to uh, preserve the kind of traditional way, you can do that as right. well. Right, you can can, you can, you can, can juice, you can ferment. Um, and you know, I've really been doing some research lately. You can freeze really anything. Right. Um, even potatoes, you know, you can slice them. Um, if you want to parboil them a little bit and then stick them on a baking sheet with a little oil and freeze them. And, and right. most things you can just put right in the freezer. Yeah, I've got right? green bell peppers in my freezer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I've been just in the last year. I've learned that you can freeze lemons yeah. whole. There you go. And so it's uh, as long as you've got the freezer space. Yeah, it's a great way to, to extend the season. The, extend the season, right? And yeah. Preserve. And veggies that are frozen are going to be a little mushy when they thaw out, but they're perfect for soups and right. for what we're making today, ratatouille, exactly. for stew, exactly. um, for stocks. You know, there's all mm -hmm. sorts of ways to use them. Yes. Juice them, put them in a smoothie. So yeah, so we are going to we're making um, something that you mentioned to me is is something that you suggest to folks is ratatouille, which is a, a this wonderful vegetable stew, and um, it uses all of the produce mm -hmm. of summer. Mm -hmm. um, so. Eggplant, onions, tomatoes, um, zucchini, bell, bell peppers, bell lots. Peppers. Yeah, mm -hmm. good way to lose all that zucchini. Yes. Um, and uh, so why don't we why don't we okay. get that going okay. and we'll just uh, and then continue talking about the okay. the food recovery. Okay. Are you ready project. for tomatoes? I think so. So I've got some onions okay. sautéing in here, and I started those a little early because I like to um, cook those down to their nice and soft, and maybe have just a little bit of color like mm -hmm. that. It just mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. makes them taste. Um, Tastes really good, and then they're not crunchy. Okay. So, um, okay. yeah, so to the pot, okay. add tomatoes. You've got some cherry got tomatoes that you're chopping up there. Right, right. And, uh, you know, you can use any kind of tomato. It could be cherry tomatoes, you know, big tomatoes, little tomatoes, um, canned tomatoes, um, tomatoes that you may have stuck in the freezer. Um, so just throw those in there. And I'm going to chop up a little garlic over here. And and also talk about the eggplant. So eggplant's a really big part of ratatouille. Mm, yes, it is. Yeah, it's a great way to use eggplant because I know some people don't really know what to do with it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so what I do um, is I treat the eggplant first by, um, and I cut it up into maybe one inch cubes or so, and then I toss it with a little bit of salt. And really not a lot, it's about a half a teaspoon of salt on a whole eggplant. And what that does is it, it draws out some of the moisture and dries out the eggplant a little bit so that when we saute it, which I'm gonna do here in a second, um, it browns better. Okay. And, um, and it, I think it improves the texture and the flavor okay. of the eggplant a bit. So before I throw it, I'm gonna brown it separately from the other veggies. Before I throw it in this pan, I'll just blot it with a paper towel and soak up some of that extra moisture, a little bit of the salt. And, um, and then, like I said, when you saute it, it, it browns a lot, um, a lot more easily and nicely because there's not so much moisture in there. So there we go. Nice. Just throw that in there with some olive oil. And, uh, and then I'll chop some garlic. Um, so, Shay, so, so you've got all this food. So you've got produce and, and food from places like YRMC and the, um, the Prescott Pines. Prescott Pines, Embry yeah. Riddle. Embry Riddle. Uh, actually, Little Caesars Pizzas Little started Caesars. Uh, donating. Neat. Uh, and Einstein's Bagels. Mm -hmm. So a how lot does, of different sources. How does that food get to people then? So you've got all you've got all these great sources. How does it? How well, does it get um, I feel very fortunate, and mm -hmm. we do. The plan A is to ask the organization that's receiving the donation, mm -hmm. donated food, to go pick it up, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and okay. that's worked out really well so far. Uh huh. But if for some reason they are, you know, a volunteer doesn't show up <laughs> for the day, then I actually have a, a small group of volunteers that they said they would. They would do that. Great. And plan C is if I can't get anybody else to do it, I go get it. Maybe do it. <laughs> Great. I go get it. <laughs> and I was really surprised. This is a figure that um, my office just released. 
is in our first year of doing this project, we have rescued over 50,000 pounds of food. Boy, that's something. That is, that's an amazing number. That's a, yeah. Yeah, I was, wow. I was surprised it, it mounted up. Uh, but, yep, as I, up. Personally, I, I haven't paid a lot of attention to the numbers. It's just like I do it and then I have to report it because we do weigh or mm -hmm. ask um, the recipient organization to weigh the food because that's one of our parameters to measure our success. Mm -hmm. Keep and track. so many pounds of food translates into so many meals. Right. So that helps us know, you know, what we're, what we're doing. Right. And that 50,000 pounds, that's throughout Yavapai County? That's throughout Yavapai County, yes. I have a partner on the Verde Valley side mm -hmm. that is um, doing the same thing that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Wow. So all of that would have been in the landfill by now, but now, but it went into people's bellies. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. Well, and so this good. is a good time to talk about, yes, it goes into people's um, bellies, mm -hmm. but we also, there's a, a food rescue pyramid that's out that a number of organizations are um, using because this food rescue is something that's happening on both a national and an international scale. Right. And so what we really need is, believe it or not, to reduce the amount of food that we're producing because we're producing too much. Yeah, I've heard like 200% of the food that we need. That's how much more we actually right. produce. Yeah. So our goal is to, we may not be able to affect what's produced, but what we can do is get food to people who need it. And then if the food is kind of starting to get off and really may not be as nutritious or, uh, anymore, I have established some relationships with some local farmers and they come and get the food, you know, for their animals. Uh huh. And then lastly, we d donate it for compost. Mm -hmm. So again, we've got some backyard gardeners and some farmers that come and pick up um, the worst of the food <laughs> to put in their compost piles and let it recycle back to the earth. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So. Yeah. Keep That's, it out of the landfill. So. Right, and so yeah. that, those 40 or 50, over 50,000 pounds of food, some of that may be, have gone to animals and some of it may be to compost, but our priority is humans. To feed people. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, so we've got, that's great, you're throwing some celery in there. Throwing some celery? Ratatouille, you can throw just about anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, celery is great. Um, I've put potatoes in here too. So we've got our, um, so we've got onions, garlic, tomatoes, bell peppers, zucchini, celery, and then I will add that um, eggplant here in a second. And uh, it smells really good, doesn't it? Do you want to yeah. put any parsley in there? Oh, that's or a great idea. Wait, yeah. okay. I will chop that up too. Okay. Um, so you mentioned gleaning, Shay, and um, tell, tell us more about what that is and, and the, you know, the projects, you know, what you've gleaned. Well, okay, just to clarify, some people mm -hmm. use the term gleaning to, for any rescued food. Okay. Um, I tend to use it more for gleaning from backyard gardeners, mm -hmm. uh, people that have gardens or have fruit trees uh, in their backyard. And last, as I mentioned, I think earlier, last fall, uh, we got contacted by a number of people that had uh, fruit trees and we had a great bumper season last year. Yeah. And so we went out and actually picked apples and that's where the, uh, my recipe for the blender applesauce came from. Yeah. And we also, um, with the gleaning, could be from a gardener, like I got the idea actually from a master gardener who I met, mm -hmm. and she had a bumper crop of vegetables, and every couple weeks would um, bring us bags of of her extra produce. Great. And one of the one of the great things that, that happened out of that was she this year had told me that she was going to not plant as much because she had such abundance. Uh-huh. And when she learned about our program, she says, "Okay, I'll plant the same amount next year planning to donate it to you." And so that's one of the um, seeds, if you will, that we're planting this year mm -hmm. is to ask gardeners um, to Plant, plan to plant extra plant this extra. season, this spring, this summer, mm -hmm. and then donate that extra to our program and we'll get it where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. So sort of like a, a victory garden. Right. Yep. And, and it would also yep. be maybe somebody has been thinking about gardening for a long time and they just haven't. Well, okay, maybe this is the year to start 
and then you can share some of the bounty. So, sure. Yes. Wonderful. Well, I think my eggplant is done over here. Let me toss some of that in there. And, um, you know, sometimes the ratatouille I make home at home, I'll mix up the type of tomatoes I use. And um, if they're not juicy enough, I'll add a little canned tomato. So I'm going to do that mm -hmm. right now. Make this guy real juicy and soupy. That looks wonderful. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Smells great. I mean, who can resist something that pretty, right? Yes. <laughs> and nutritious. And nutritious and, and delicious. We're always being told more vegetables and fruits. So. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's always my mantra. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the end result. So this is some ratatouille I made um, last night. And uh, I think one of the be good things about ratatouille is it can freeze really well. So if you make a big pot and you don't get through it and you don't <laughs> feel like eating leftovers for a week, use it. Because <laughs> yes. it's already cooked up and soupy and stewy. So, um, so it works really well. And um, it's a great way. You can just serve it just plain like that. We can um, throw a little Parmesan cheese on top. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want uh, some embellishments, um, sometimes if I have pesto, mm -hmm. I'll mix oh, okay. that with it or some f throw some fresh parsley or fresh basil. Um, and have it with serve some it with some fresh bread. Mm -hmm. Right? Yum. One of the things that you've recovered there. <laughs> yes. Yep. yes. Yeah. One good thing about day old bread is it toasts really well, right? Yes. So toast yes. up some bread, serve it with that ratatouille. Yes. Good stuff. French toast, maybe even. Yeah, oh, <laughs> there you go. Even there we go. Better. There we go. Well, we were, gosh, we were so appreciate what you do with the Food Recovery Project and yeah. also for coming on the show. Well, thank we're you. so happy to have you yes, here. I was delighted. And um, to thank you, you get an official Your Healthy Kitchen t shirt. Grand. And Grand. Thank you very really, much. Yeah, thank very you, much. Shay. And um, before we, we go, though, share um, you know, if somebody is interested in helping out or getting involved, how would they do that? Well, the easiest way is to call me. Uh, my cell phone is 928-592-7929. Okay. Or people can email at shay at cornucopiacommunity.org. Great. And they could volunteer to pick up food or? They can volunteer to pick up food, uh, to go out and glean, sign mm -hmm. up. I'm getting a list of both people uh, that have backyard gardens that might want to donate and making a list of people that are specifically interested in going and picking fruit. Mm -hmm. And that even includes kids groups. I've got a couple of, of the kids groups that they're going to take on a field trip. Oh, great. Yes, this summer and get them in touch with where their food comes from. So always good. Some great and then also you mentioned if you have a garden, plan a little extra. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And then let you know it's there. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's uh, just good stuff. <laughs> um, so for more affordable, healthy meal ideas, be sure to check out all of our videos and recipes at yrmchealthconnect.org. And you can also follow us on Facebook, where you'll see what I'm making at home in my kitchen, get insider tips, and keep up with food, health, and even gardening-related events in the community. And thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon.